In this video, we're going to take a look at Inventor 2013 General Enhancements and Interface Enhancements. We'll start off by looking at the welcome screen. This is a traditional welcome screen we've seen in a lot of other products. With Inventor, we have three subsections, one called Work, Learn, and Extend. We have our standard New, Open, and Project command, as well as Recent Files. It's also a nice setting here to adjust our default template. Normally you'd have to do a reinstall to do that in the past. It's nice that it's there now. Of course, down there at the bottom, we have the display on startup for those who don't want to see it. However, this is really great for newer users, and we'll start off by looking at these interactive tutorials that they've so nicely included. This is great for the, the user and your staff, or me, it's yourself, uh, just learning to pick up Inventor for the first time. This will walk you through creating a, an initial sketch, a part, uh, in order to get a feel for how the modeling process works. And as you can see, as I move my cursor over each one of these items on the right, it does highlight the area of intent on the screen. So you, you can see where it wants me to highlight it, different bubbles will appear throughout the not only the sketch but also the interface where the command is located. This becomes a very handy learning tool to make sure that uh, you have a good uh, start for the software, you have a good uh, base footing to get yourself going. Kind of that uh, first 10 days of the software kind of enhancement. So I'll just click through this a little bit more so you can kind of see this process. Now when you're done you can go up to the upper right and click on finish tutorial and that will take you back out of there. So let me start up that welcome screen again. And before I do that, I'll just kind of show you that those videos are also available right here in your Getting Started tab. You can see the Essential Skill videos down there as well. There's also links to more learning resources to the website, as well as Autodesk Exchange. This is actually a new portion for Inventor. This has been in AutoCAD for a little bit already. But what this allows you to do is go out to this website, this will be live during launch day, that allows you to pull down different free trials of different softwares. And from what you can see here, four out of those six that I have on my screen right now are actually from the Autodesk Lab site. There were different add-ins that were created throughout the year that are actually currently available right now. The iLaserCut and iLocalizer are a couple newer ones. And there's also going to be a few more new ones at launch as well. And what's nice about that is you can try them out, see if you like them, and uh, purchase them if you need to, and some of them are completely free. The next thing I fired up here was the Autodesk Cloud Documents. This was previously called Autodesk Cloud, but they've since renamed it to Autodesk 360. That's not to confuse it with the PLM product. This is still the same cloud storage system we had in 2011, but just got a new name to it. And I do like to show this off a little bit, so I'll spend some time here just kind of getting into the share system. You can see I did have quite a few drawings in here and I can turn different layers on and off definitely with inside of this web portal. And this is something that's available on Internet Explorer. I'm actually running it in Google Chrome right now. And you can also see I have a bunch of properties available to me as well since this is a, a nice native inventor drawing file. If I go back to my root directory I can see that inventor drawing I was just on, but I also want to take a look at this DWF file. So with this viewer I get a little bit more control. I can zoom to each view one at a time, going through the document, going through the sheet. Now since this is also Google Chrome, I also have the ability to go to a 3D, which would we'll do that in just a moment here. As you can see I have the same items for layers and properties but I want to take a look at this three-dimensional view of it. So I'll switch to my second part of this DWFX, and I'll actually do some in-canvas zooming and investigation of this model. Very handy if you want to share this. So if we go up here into the area for sharing, I do public or private sharing. Uh, I can see different versions here. I can upload a new version. So it's like a, a very nice collaboration tool for people outside of your company or people without CAD access or even if you want to access these things on tablets. There is a design review app now for tablets as well. And as a reminder, you still have three gigabytes of storage if you're on a subscription. If you're not, you get one gigabyte, which is still quite a bit. So 
Let's exit out of there. Again, that's where over there in the Autodesk 360. That's also available with inside of the Inventor interface as we go to. Uh, the next general enhancement we'll look at is the newly revamped Create New File dialog. So here you can see the different template folders on the left, different file types here as well, which again is very nice and descriptive for the new user to the software. So someone who's just coming into Inventor gets a much better understanding of what each of these file types really do. We can still access different projects down here at the bottom. Uh, we also have then our Create button. Now, one of the settings for Inventor 2013 is you no longer start directly into a sketch. So I had to click on the Create New Sketch, and it brings up my origin planes here for me. You can see there I have my three standard origin planes as well as my axes there. What it actually wants me to do is to click on a plane to start sketching. This is a big detraction from what it used to be. And if you really like the, the way that the old sketcher used to fire up a new sketch for yourself on the XY plane, you can still go into your application options and to adjust that. But I'm going to go ahead and just grab that plane, and I'll start sketching. And we'll see this command a little bit later on in a different video, but this is one of the newer center point rectangle commands. So I'll quickly just finish that sketch and extrude this. And what I want to show you is the fact that when you do that create new sketch command in the upper left, um, it doesn't always fire up that origin triad for you. It doesn't always fire up those origin planes. It's only when you don't have a sketch yet in the design. So you see if I hit sketch on the face or if I try to go in here and do it, it still knows how to pick that face. So it's only on that first sketch you have. Okay, I'll go back to the welcome screen and open up here a recent document. Here we want to take a look at some other files here. Let me fire one, I'll, I'll open quick. We're going to take a look at appearances here next. And we should see this message as it comes up. I get a message here saying that I have inventor color styles being replaced by what's called appearances now which is the new standard for 2013. And, and don't fret, you don't have to redo anything. You can actually migrate your old styles in there. But uh, it's now something called appearances and going through an appearance library. So up here at the top, you can see in my quick access toolbar, I have two new little areas up here. One's for material and the other one's for appearances. So this first one's called the material browser. I hit the button there in front of that generic pull down. And here you can see I can create a new material library. I can create a new material in Canvas here inside of this, this just one file here. I can create new categories. So one thing I really like to do is create like my own company uh, standard for libraries. Uh, here you can see you can also bring those in from your existing style library you might have on your network. So you can see a bunch of these different materials. There's an Autodesk material library and also an Inventor material library. Uh, the difference in those two, the Inventor one is more mechanical based. You'll find more mechanical materials in there. The Autodesk Material Library is a little bit more uh, generic to different disciplines. So I'll create this company one here, like I mentioned I wanted to do. And I'm going to add ABS Plastic to my company um, material style library there, material library. So now I have that one available. Whichever one I leave active here when I leave this dialog box, will be what's available to me in my pull down up top. Now, what you see here is me launching the existing old style library editor, and there's no materials there. It's all just lighting. So again, those were pulled out of there. No, they're no longer stored in your styles and standards. Okay, so here's my pull down. You can see I can only choose from um, ABS plastic, but if I switch over to Autodesk or Inventor material library, I get much more selection. This is great if you're working for different clients that require different materials or if you just want to have your own separate company standard of materials. So I went ahead and changed that to copper. And if I go to physical, you can see that automatically changed copper. I didn't have to go to my eye properties. I didn't have to change it there. I could have just do it right there with that pull down. Now what's even great, uh, what's even great about this uh, to a higher extent in the assemblies is I can click on a part in the assembly and then I can change the material. That saves me from having to do some longer steps, like going to this build material command and then loading in a column for my materials. Okay, so I would do, you know, choose columns, I go find my material, I would drag that up there. Then I could change my materials from this pull down, you know, going through dialogues. 
Well, it's a lot easier if I were just to select the, the part here through part or component selection and then change the material from the list. And it does that without me having to go into the file explicitly or go to the build material editor. So that's a very quick way to change your materials at the assembly level. Very nice enhancement, I think. Just makes you a little bit faster at what you do. Now the next thing we'll look at is appearances. Again, these are kind of the same thing as the color overrides were in the past, but they are again using a appearance style library now. So when I change this to cyan, it's an override of the copper. And if I want to clear that, we still have at the very top a clear override option to get rid of that cyan override. You can see at the very bottom I have different material libraries. And the, the window for modifying those is also very similar to the material browser. So I can see that very easily there, create new categories, uh, create new types of materials right there as well without having to uh, jump through hoops with my style library all the time. So much more streamlined way to get materials, appearances, to quickly change them uh, on the fly. So here I'll just go back and override this color to a beige. Let's see, here's my beige up near the top. Plenty to choose from. So one of the last things I want to talk to you about is the ability to customize our marking menu a little bit further. Uh, what's nice here is they have organized your, your options in the, in the uh, marking menu for more specific, specific items, but it also allows you to customize it for dimensions or lines or arcs, whatever you want to do. So here if I just go to customize, I want the uh, parameters to show up every time I right click on a dimension, just so I can fire that dialog box if need be. So I'll go to my environment, my sub-environment is the dimension. I'll go over here, I'll find the parameter command, and I'll link that onto that area of the radial menu. And down in the lower left is also another enhancement to change the level of our overflow, which is the what you would consider a more traditional right-click menu, where you have a short one or a long one. Here you can actually have a short, long, or no menu uh, for overflow at all. So here we have my parameters, and I have my overflow menu as you see down below. If I hold control and right click inside of a sketch I actually get access to my constraints now which is even faster so I don't have to go up to my menu at the top to get my standard two-dimensional constraints. That's another nice enhancement to that marking menu. That thing just keeps getting better and better. I'm, getting, I'm using it more and more often actually. So you get some really nice customization there. Uh, you can furthermore do more customized control right click marking menus for different areas of the software that you're in. Uh, they've really opened up the customizability of this. Uh, the only problem is finding the time of the day to spend all that time customizing. But if you do it once, you can uh, definitely save it, export it, carry it forward as need be. But um, if you want to get really serious about how you use the marking menu, you might spend like maybe uh, a couple you know a couple hours may setting it up to be perfect the way you want it and tweak it as you go.